I have a, a short, sweet message today, if you don't mind. And it has to do really with 2017 and Isaiah 45. You see, over and over again in the Bible, in Ezra, in Chronicles, in Isaiah, this man Cyrus is mentioned, but he's mentioned with a purpose. I have called him 200 years before he lived in order that he would build my church. As the story goes, the king Cyrus is born and made fabulously rich. And he's made fabulously rich for a reason, because God says, I am gonna give you the power, the influence, the wealth, in order to build my kingdom, to set my people free, that you would get my Jacob, my sinners, and that you would heal them and save them. And then God goes on to say, I am gonna give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches that nobody knows about. The treasures of darkness, of course, are his children that are living in darkness. Those that are sinners, those that don't even know how to save themselves, that are troubled, that their lives are dark and have problems. I'm gonna give you my treasure, he tells Cyrus. Oh, I'm gonna give you all the natural wealth in the world, and I will. But because you're going to do my bidding, I'm gonna give you the treasures of darkness as well. You see, Deuteronomy 8 says that he gives power to get wealth to people in order that they would do something, not buy boats and Mercedes Benz, no, that they would establish his covenant that they would be a testimony, first of all, that people will say, how were you successful when, good Lord Almighty, you, it doesn't like you were meant to be. And the person will testify because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. But then it has a secondary meaning, that we would take those resources and use some of that to build the kingdom, not just consume, but to establish and expand the kingdom of God. Cyrus responded. God knew he would, and he seized the moment. Cyrus said, though, wait a minute. That's a privilege and opportunity. And he understood something that the church at large does not. Therefore, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They're not successful. They're not the beacon of light that they should be. They're not the jealousy that provokes to jealousy. They're not that, no. But Cyrus, on the other hand, reads the Bible, sees what Isaiah wrote about him 210 years before, probably falls off the chair and say, I'm that man? The Bible calls him simply anointed. <laughs> he basically should have said, so you're kidding me. I'm a Christian? I have the honor and the privilege of being a child of God? Cyrus saw it, understood it, got it. People today get, quote, born again in the kingdom, and they go back and have a sandwich as if nothing happened. No, you have the honor, the privilege. It's without estimate that you are now a child of the Creator, but for a purpose. Cyrus understood the purpose and immediately engaged, obeyed, and seized the moment. What Cyrus did is he understood something that Christians, my God, something that happened in the Bible with Moses when they crossed the Red Sea and when he was called, when Abraham met God, and God said, I know you'll steward your children properly. When Peter responded, when Paul responded, when Esther responded, these are all moments that Cyrus responded as well. He understood. You see, Christians don't get a specific day of visitation. They don't understand a Kronos moment, which is just boring time. Hour, I gotta be at lunch at seven. I gotta go to work at eight. The clock as it goes, the days as they go. That's just Kronos time. But all of a sudden, biblically, something can take place. And that becomes a, a karyos moment, a visitation from God. Now, my God, if there's ever a point we're going to understand, it's the following. This is only in the New Testament. The word doesn't exist in the Old Testament. It's, it's all of a sudden a visitation where, listen to this. In the book of John, please, doesn't understand this, scream, because you must understand this. A carious moment is so special. When God intervenes, it's a moment of favor, grace. It's extraordinary. It's monumental. It's the intervention of God in that boring life 
or situation. It's where you can call upon God and He shows up. I'll tell you that the year 2017 is a karyos moment. And here we are living it again. My God, take advantage of it. Because the most extraordinary things can take place. I guarantee you. But listen to this in the book of John. Jesus is, I think it's chapter 7. Somebody turn to it for me. Jesus is speaking to his family members. And they urge him to go do something and go to Jerusalem. He tells them, my time is not yet come. His karyos moment is not right there. And it seems as if it's a negative depiction. It's far from it. He is as God, as the Son of God is saying, I am restricted. My time has not yet come. But he goes on to say, but your time, you can do it any time. Wait a minute. God's karyos time is restricted. But our karyos time, we can have any time we want. It's one of the epic moments in all of the Bible. And my God, it flies over the head of Christians to understand that you're not waiting for something to fly down out of the sky for some spectacular moment. You can create your karyos moment this very second by declaring it and saying, you know what? I'm fed up with being fed up. I'm tired with being tired. I want my moment right now. God, I'm taking my moment. I'm seizing the moment. Something Cyrus did. But Christians are so passive. And the kingdom is not taken that way, obviously. It's by force and violence. It's by finally standing up, thrusting your shoulders back and saying, wait one minute. This isn't lining up that I'm a child of God, a born-again Christian, and yet tomorrow is the same as yesterday. And yesterday is, repeats itself over and over again. There's something that's skewed here, and it's not going to be skewed anymore. So from here on in, I'm the head, and I have the power to get wealth, and I'm going to respond like Cyrus, and I'm going to build the kingdom for God. And all of a sudden, you've opened up heaven, and a portal of blessings can come over your life. Amen is right. And it's certainly time where we realize that this is a New Testament doctrine available to all of us. So while Jesus was governed because of times of visitation in the past for himself, he says, your time, your carrier's moment is available to any time that you decide to believe that it is. The moment that you say, wait a second, truly my God is my God. One day I was suffering with a, just an insane situation. I couldn't deal with it anymore. I just wanted, let me just get out of here. And I remember walking in the morning and thinking, but wait a second, just one minute. My Father is the creator of the universe. What I need, He knows I need. And He died for me. And I started thinking of the scripture, that while we were yet sinners, he died for me. So now that I'm a child of God and I'm serving God, now all of a sudden the heaven is shut and I wouldn't have it. I just wouldn't have it. I said, that's it. By the time this is done for me, this is resolved. I don't care what is going on. I don't care what needs to be done. I don't need to know. All I know is that I believe in my Father, and I am a child of God, and I am not a mere mortal. I am a new creation in Christ Jesus. I kept thinking that and saying that. By the time I got home, you thought you had Godzilla on your hands. I was a giant to my own self, saying, I'm not going to, I'm not falling prey to this. No way. The Bible says, God says, the blood says. And it wasn't but 15 minutes before the stupid situation was resolved in an instant. Listen, you are not mere creatures. You're not mere mortals. You have to do what Cyrus did. See your name written in that Bible. See that Christ died for you. See that the promises to Cyrus and all the others were given to them because God knew you're going to respond and you're going to believe. And I'm going to open up heaven and the treasures of darkness. 
and I am going to give you hidden riches that no one knows about. Oh, the natural will be easy, but will you truly accept the treasures of true darkness? Will you go out and mine his children? No one's asking you to go to a, a dark continent. We're just asking you to go down the block and find the darkness there and save them in the mall. Come on now. Everyone, but everyone should be in the cell group because you can't do this alone. And everyone, and everyone should be running another cell group and inviting people. And you won't be alone. Those of you that are new to this, you will not be alone. You'll be buttressed, you'll be helped, we'll hold your arms up. But God knows what you can do with your employees or your employers. God knows how you can save your neighbors and their daughters' health in the future. Be used of God and allow for a moment to change from an everyday life that does not have the significance that it should to a karyos moment, a supreme moment where everything changes in an instant. You can be Abraham and get a visitation from God simply because God knew he would obey. You can be an Esther and be called to royalty in the spirit because God knew you, like Cyrus, will respond. You can be a Paul, even though you've had wrong thinking all your life, even murdering people, terrible man, but there comes a moment where God visits you and he says that life is in the past and this life is in front of you. Do you want it? That's the key. And whatever you need wiped out is so wiped clean. And God is saying, let's go, let's get up. Even if you failed yesterday, and you failed last month, today is a karyos moment. It is an absolute supreme moment that the Bible says you must plunge into. You must grab with zeal and fervor. You, if it's common to you, then it's common. But when a karyos moment comes, that day where God walks over to you and enters into your presence, enters into your present moment, everything changes. And it can happen, as God said, anytime you wish, if only you'll have the knowledge to do it and the faith to do it. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we had trouble opening up a church in a certain location. I won't mention it. But it was difficult until finally someone said, give it to me. What do you mean? I'll travel there. I'll do it. Really? Yes. Give it to me. I'll do it. The faith quotient was out of this world. We knew. That's it. That's the answer. And sure enough, because that person knew this is my moment. This is my day. I'm changing today. All that negativity, all that those waves of problems that were insurmountable, where I'm teased and then it doesn't work. And again, I have a hope in it, and it's dashed. And hope deferred has made my heart sick. And I cannot take it anymore. All of a sudden, that's the moment where you say, God, I'm fed up and I want my Jesus now. This is my karyos moment. It's my 2017 moment of favor. I'm going to claim that as of today. And watch. Just watch. It's the moment where Elijah threw the mantle on Elijah. It's the moment where the angel came and spoke to Mary. These moments that can happen right now. If only the Christian church will stop being apathetic. If they'll stop just conforming and accepting whatever happens and just bending to the wind. Be the wind. Be the Holy Spirit. You blow the wind of God. That's what you've been designed to be. And so in this chapter with Cyrus, the Bible says, ask of me, command ye me. So God all of a sudden changes and says, Cyrus, because I know that you will do my bidding because I can trust you like David, another Karyos moment, because I can give you the anointing. Then Cyrus, ask me whatever you want, I'll do it. In fact, command me, 
to fulfill your desires. I will do it. It's the reason God said, greater works you will do. That's a karyos moment. And God's expecting for us to do greater works. He's not lying. It's just the faith level and the knowledge level of Christianity. I was talking to a pastor, pastor quite a while, almost 20 years. And because he was so full of biblical knowledge, he couldn't receive the wind of the Holy Ghost. He knew. So I said, but you've come for advice. You've come for direction. I'm giving it to you by the grace of God. Take it. Well, what about, but the Bible says, it. oh my Lord. It's like carving, a, a, you know, an image in a piece of granite. He was so full, so knowledgeable, so knowing, so convinced. There was no penetrating that religious spirit. Yet, he's complaining that he has no success and he wants to find out how to do it. So when he's told, he can't receive it. No, 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 no. Because he knows. He absolutely knows. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. You can't have a karyos moment when you're stuck in a Cronus mindset. Two plus two equals four. Four and four, eight. Not in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, two plus two can equal whatever God wants it to equal. He can multiply anything and do anything. And you're designed to cooperate with that. Allow the new wine to come into your karyos moment. Allow for God to intervene in your life. Invite Him and say, my God, change me, heal me, reform me, transform me. But here I am. I want to be like Cyrus. Pour the wealth of the Spirit and of the world into me. And I'll use it to establish your covenant and your kingdom. I'll use it to find sick and lonely people. I'll use it to find the sinner that nobody likes. I'll use it. Sometimes I look at stories of our firemen. I look at stories of our policemen. I look at stories of our army men and women. All these branches of life that sacrifice, they don't make a lot of money. That can never be their motive. Their motive internally has to be to help, to protect, to guard. They sacrifice their safety, running into buildings full of smoke and fire, running into bullets coming at them, traveling across oceans. I'll tell you a story. If it wasn't for the success at the end of the story, I think you'd have to minister to me because it was one of those. They called me down to another church, one of our churches, to meet a precious little dog. It's called the service dog, right? Is that what it's called? He's called? A beautiful puppy from the armed services. And he's got his credentials on, and they called me to show me how intelligent and world-trained this dog is. And it, it, the story was so intriguing that I said, okay, I'll go. I can't believe you. what you're saying is true. I, it, it, it's more than a human, his intelligence. The training that they give these animals in the army was shocking to me. The dog knew by glance, by motion, friend, not friend, sit, don't sit, guard. I mean, I, like a genius. But then the story began. I asked, who's the owner? And they brought me this wonderful young lady who at the very outset began to cry. And I said, what's wrong, dear? She said, well, she's very lonely and she had very bad thoughts. She had been in the army for 12 years, three tours in the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iraq, front lines. And it became her life. She said, members in her troop, I don't know the right verbiage, they were family. They, they fought together, ate together, lived together, protected one another's lives, all through tears. I did everything not to cry. I said, well, what's the matter, honey? She said, because she took ill in the army and got that horrible lie, she had to be discharged. So not only is she in fear of a life getting operations, but now her life, her society, 
her friends, her family. She has to leave. She's brokenhearted. She meets a man. He takes full advantage of her and leaves her, dumps her cold. She's distraught. She's ill. She's lonely. Her society of 12 years is gone. And she has nothing other than very bad, very, very negative thoughts. The only joy in her life is this little puppy. Apparently, they gave it to her as consolation to keep her occupied so she doesn't hurt herself. Until one day, someone meets her and evangelizes her. And they say, please, come to church. There's an, a new society for you. Brokenhearted, she can't see it. But they pick her up, they bring her to church with her puppy. She's pounced upon in love. Everyone is hugging her, kissing her, getting her food. The puppy is playing with everybody. and She finds newfound life or hope. And this woman who has a healing in the name of Jesus is now getting herself ingrained into another family. Maybe I'll never be the same as those soldiers that she fought with. Maybe we can't capture that on this side of the Atlantic. Maybe we can't be on the front lines like those brave men and women dying for us. But the least we could do is be half of what those men and women are and go out and save someone at McDonald's, not in front of a bullet, not getting a horrible disease, not losing our family. The least we can do is save men and women like that, that sacrifice their lives for us. I think maybe we need to reprioritize everything in our lives. Go get God's children and thank God that they got that young lady.